I'm gonna escape from here. There's armed guards everywhere. If Blue finds out, we're dead. We're already dead. This is your journey. If you succeed, it will set you free. So I have my katana umbrella. Katana. Or... Katana. What? I know where to put that thing. Unfortunately, uh, we apologize. Jay uh, could not make it this week, so it's just Kat and I. You suck with us. But to make up for it, Kat's going to do a little strip. We got, we got to do something. Jay's not here, man. But today, we're reviewing... Sucker Punch. <laughs> So this is an action fantasy thriller set in the 1950s. Much like A Night With Me. And it follows a young woman as she is put into an insane asylum by her evil stepfather. And it is basically she uses this dreamlike world, this other reality, to escape from the horrors of her newfound life and also to plan an escape route from this place. If you look at the scores online, it's not doing so great with the critics, and there's, there's a reason for that, and we'll explain that, but... There was a lot of hype, though. I was stoked about this. I made a video on my own channel being like, Oh, it's gonna look so good! I can't wait to see it! Zack Snyder directed this, and he directed 300 and Watchmen, and Watchmen I love, and 300 was very visual appealing, no homo. You uh, love the six pack. I just see him cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> now it's just, I just like muscles. You have a boner, whatever. Uh, my, my pants didn't get tight. The thing is, is that with Zack Snyder, I'm starting to worry that he is more of a visual director and doesn't really care about the context and story of his movies. And I'm kind of worried that he's directing the next Superman film. Time will tell. That's the thing. This movie is beautiful, but it seemed like he, like he co-wrote it, yeah. and it seemed like he was just like, this would be a really cool scene, this would be really cool, this would be really yeah. cool, and we'll just add some plot to make yeah. it kind of make sense. Figure out the logistics later. Yeah. Let's let's do the in-between. I just want hot girls fighting. Go. Now, this time he wanted lead females, because he did that all lead males for 300. Also, fun Canadian fact, it was shot in Vancouver, at least a lot of it. Well, Probably all on green screen. Oh, definitely all The whole on thing is just a, a fantasy thing. Nothing looks real. The CGI is great. I thought it was really, really nice. There weren't yeah. parts where I was like, ugh. I must admit, though, the soldiers that they're fighting in one sequence remind me a lot of the Hellgas soldiers from Killzone. I like the samurai mechs. Those were sick. <sighs> we should make one out of the Sega and just build upon it. It also reminded me a lot of Pan's Labyrinth, but this will not be nominated for Academy Awards. No, no, because it's way too action y. <laughs> yeah, too but it's that action. same idea. She deals with her issues and problems by going into a fantasy world. So what isn't totally clear in the preview is that it's like a world within a world. Like there's like three levels. I'm not ruining anything by Exception. saying that. Probably a, a flaw though in the movie because you're really confused. Not confused in a good way no. at the beginning. Emily Browning went off and got herself all hot. She has the biggest lips ever. Yeah, she's got some fat lips. I think that's what hot dogs are made of. I'm not handing them hers. She kicked a lot of ass, and she looked great the whole film. Oh yeah, and they did a whole bunch of training for this, so that the fight scenes would actually look good. I think all the girls did a great job. Yeah, there's some girl power happening. Yeah. Some little Spice Girls. I don't know if we can be friends anymore. Well. I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> we gotta finish the review! Abby Cornish is also in it. She looks like a young Sharon Stone, but has man hands. But that's fine. <sighs> that's fine. Are they like sausages? They're thick. Yeah, like thick. I still like it on my bum. Jenna Malone is also in this, and finally I feel like this is a role that I actually like her in. Usually she plays like a teenager that's like complaining and annoying. Yeah. She had a sick haircut, but she kicked ass. Very short. Vanessa Hudgensen in it, she plays Blondie. Um, I, she was <laughs> I'm sorry, she's in High School Musical, I can't like her. Scott Glenn was in this movie, and the whole time I kept being like, yo, this guy looks like Spock, or yeah. like Spock's father or something, and I stalked him on IMBD. I call him Leatherface. He's got like a very weathered look and he's in every film. He was always like her mentor. Laying out the game plan. He was Morpheus. Carla from Watchmen is back in this as well. She is uh, uh, an excellent milf. I kick Megan Fox in the neck to get to her. So apparently they also had to cut a whole bunch of scenes to make it uh, PG-13. Originally he was going for an R. So I really want to see director's cut. Also in the director's cut, you get to see the dancing. That was the one thing. Everyone's mesmerized by her dancing abilities, but you never get to see one Ever. Like, she, like, goes like this, yeah. and that's it. And then it's, like, cut to something else. You're like, what? So I really like the score for this. Uh, it was a whole bunch of covers and mashups. Like, the whole opening sequence is uh, Sweet Dreams by Emily Browning, and it was such a great cover. There's, like, a whole story that's told just to this song with no words or anything, just the song. And it's so powerful. It gets you right into it right away. You're just like... 
So this film is not the most brilliant thing you've seen ever, and I can't recommend it to everyone, but if anyone wants to see like hot girls fighting, then definitely check this out. Yep. Um, and the fighting choreography is amazing in it. So well done. Like we said, it's music like is amazing, the soundtrack's awesome. So, But there's so many flaws to the story that I just can't ignore. Overall, the idea and concept is a little bit silly, the way it was executed, and you know, not showing the dancing. As an example. I want to see the dancing. I just want to know what's so mesmerizing about this chick's dancing. Come yeah. on. I'm a beta male and I want to see it. I'd give this a 6 out of 10. I give this movie an 8. Um, technically, yes. The storyline, like, the parallels are brutal. She's, like, dancing and, like, mesmerizing people and someone's going to uh, copy this map down and she's, like, fighting a dragon! La la la! la, 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 la. There are no parallels. They're just... It's, it's pure just excuses. escapism. It's just excuses to have sick fight scenes. Yeah. As long as you can, like, put your brain on ice, just not think about it. As long as you're like, okay, this is not a thinking movie. This is just a beautiful, enjoyable, kick-ass movie. Great movie. I left the movie theater being like, yeah, that was awesome. I just wanted to slice people up with my cool and wrong. You got just, some problems. I'm I do saying. have problems. I have anger management issues. You do. It's because of Jay. My nipples are frozen. <laughs> can you actually see it? Nah. Doesn't matter. And also, what isn't totally clear in the in the and also what isn't totally <laughs> my life. Also, what isn't totally. <laughs> I think I got a little droopy on here. Sorry. Yeah.